Okay, so you didn't stop. I'll go on. So we're going to prove the other one. So this is going to be like this for all G. And now we're going to work with, we're going, now we need A and B as well. Curry of uncurry of G applied to A and B is the same as G applied to A and B. So I press Control C, Control P to see what needs to be done. I type intros and it's telling me to prove this. So I can just say, so let's try what happens if you don't do unfold, if you just say simplify. See, nothing happens because it's not being told that it should unfold curry and curry. So I'm going to unfold the definitions. And now when I say simplify, I get the proof easily. Okay, now this is not the end of the story. So first of all, cock users are going to use this notation here. This is called the curried notation. They will all they will typically define functions like this rather than as taking pairs. That's one thing to note. So when you see something that is a arrow b arrow c, then that means well it's really a function of two arguments. But let's, uh, let's also try something slightly fancier. Um, let's define when two sets are isomorphic. So if I have sets x and y, when are they isomorphic? Well, that means there exists a u from x to y, and there exists a v from y to x, such that for all x, v of u of x equals x, and for all y, u of v of y equals y. Suppose this is your definition of what isomorphic sets means, namely that there exists bijections back and forth. It's not an unreasonable definition. And now we want to show an isomorphism between these sets, this one, and this one. Okay, so, so fun the function space c to the a times b and the function space c to the b to the a. Okay, so how do you proceed here? Well, I mean you could now say unfold isomorphic but I have isomorphic in front of my eyes here. I see what I have to do. So I have to provide u and the v. And the way to provide u and the v is to use the exists. I say exists and I just simply say what my u is. So the u is a function which in my case it takes an f of this type and it has to produce a g. So it takes an f and now I have to produce a g. So this is going to be a function which takes, which takes an a and a b and it applies it to a b like that okay so you see it already put in my u now it wants me to produce v so I say okay i can give you b as well something that takes a g and it takes a pair and then it applies g to the first component of the pair and the second component of the pair now of course what am i doing this is just currying and uncurring you see this is how I defined currying and uncurring. So actually, I don't have to type all of this. I can go back and I say, in one way, in one case, curry is the thing that you want. So u is the curry and the v is in the uncurry in this case. Okay. So now we do this. Let's see. We say split because, well, okay. So you want to prove this. What do you do? You see it's a something complicated. It's a conjunction, so you know you have to do two cases. Whenever you see that your goal is going to fall apart into several cases, split is usually the tactic that's going to do it. But you could also use a fancy tactic like first order, which is going to do as much as it can, but it really just does the split and then it gets stuck. So we do split here. 
and we now have to prove two things. Now at this point, if I say intro, this gets very silly because now I have x, which is a function. I don't like x to be a function. So I say no, I really want here when you do the intro, I want to this x here to be actually named f. So if I do it like this, I say intro, but call it f, then it calls it f. So this is much better. And now I am where I was at the beginning when I had my problem. I tried to show that uncurry of curry of f equals f. So you see the equality here in the definition of isomorphic, this one here and this one here, is causing me at this point to try to prove something I can't prove. If you think of f as a piece of code, clearly these are not exactly the same pieces of code. They behave the same way, but they're not exactly the same. So I get stuck just like I did before. So there's just nothing I can do at this point. So there is one standard thing that people do, which I think is not the best solution, but let me show what it is, which is to assume an axiom called the axiom of extensionality. Okay, The axiom of extensionality says this. If I have two sets, x and y, and I have a function, functions f and g from x to y, then if for all x, f of x equals g of x, then f equals g. This is the axiom of extensionality of functions. Um, then, oh, sorry, for axioms I have to write it like this. Okay, so this is just a syntactic thing. Okay, for all x, y set, f of, if you have two functions f and g, here's a way how you can define, show that they're equal. So now, if I go down here, I say, well, how am I going to show that these two functions are equal? I will say apply extensionality. And now I can produce proceed as before, or since I have actually already proved this, let's see what they call it. I called it up here, see, I called it better, the uncurry and curry thing. So I just say apply better. This is a silly name for a theorem, but I'll leave it as it's now. Better, apply better. Ah, it's complaining. Let's see. Oh, it's slightly different. Um, better, see here I, I had A and B like this, but down here I have A and B packed up as a, as, as a pair. So what do I do now? Well, I could do the following. So, see that was the phone ringing. Okay, so where were we? We're trying to prove this here, namely that the uncurry of curly of f is f, and we already proved this in a slightly different form. Instead of having f and the pair, we had f and a and b. So what do we do? It's very easy actually. So if I say here intro, then I get this x as a pair, but so it's like this, for example. Okay, so I could say intros. Intros is when you're introducing many things. It'll be clear why I'm doing this in a moment. Anyway, so I have now a P here, but really I want A and B. I can immediately tell Koch, well, don't have a P here. Already decompose it into its constituents. So decompose it into an A and a B. See, and now it took that pair A cross B, and it gave me A and B separately. And this is exactly what better does. So now I can say apply better, and I'm done. The other one, I think it was called the other, let me check. Yes, it was called the other, and this one hopefully is going to work. Of course, I will have to use extensionality again, so let me do this. Intro G, apply extensionality. So now I get to the point where I can use the other theorem, the one that you were supposed to prove as an exercise. Apply the other. Um, it's still not the same. For Alex in A, curry and curry. Aha, very interesting. Okay, so do intro X. Let's do intro A here. Let's call this little X A. Okay, so now let's compare what we have here. We have here curry and curry G of A equals G of A, but what I proved earlier, and suppose I want to use this, is I already had the B. What is going on? Well, I another 
instance of extensionality is used and then it'll, it'll go through, you see, because what is this equality about? g is a function from a to b to c, so g of a is a function from b to c. I'm still comparing two functions here, so I have used, I'm going to use extensionality again to get to the form that I had. And we're done. So this is a convenient axiom, but it's not the Cock way. The Cock way is to have the so-called user-defined equality um, or setoid, but this is not a topic for a beginning tutorial, so I'm going to stop here.